Hey, this is Dr. Andrea Ospina, FunctionalAnatomySeminars.com. Uh, I've been receiving a lot of uh, questions regarding um, what I do in terms of prescribing exercises for intrinsic foot strength, uh, which is a topic that if you've been following uh, my material, you know that I, I, discuss, uh, I, discuss, I discuss quite often on my blog, etc. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and, and, and kind of show you some of the things um, that we do for intrinsic foot strength. A lot of this stuff is going to be covered at the upcoming functional range conditioning uh, seminars uh, starting in 2013. Um, but we'll go through some of the exercises and just so we kind of develop a, a basis for why uh, I've been prescribing or training in f intrinsic foot strength for so long, um, it, it kind of all started to happen when we started to talk about barefoot running and barefoot training when that became more and more popular. Um, and, and the problem, as I saw it, was the fact that a lot of people want to do this barefoot training, a lot of people want to do this barefoot running, a lot of people want to go into minimist type shoes, um, however they weren't really prepared because they're not really used to utilizing their, their foot musculature um, on a regular basis. So people pretty much had atrophied intrinsic foot muscles uh, that were almost completely non-functional. Um, so the reason being uh, is probably because you know ever since a lot of the a lot of people are born, they're put into shoes, uh, and then these shoes get more and more cushiony. Um, people start to get into things like, like Nike Air and these types of, of, of cushiony type shoes. Um, and the more that we put our feet into this cushioning uh, type material, the more that we support our feet with higher arches, for example, in our shoes, uh, the weaker our foot muscles get. It's just like if you were, put, were to put someone in a Boston brace for their back for you know, 20, 30 years of their life, and then tell them to get out of the boss embrace and do a deadlift, they're obviously going to hurt their low back because their, their you know, bracing and core musculature would be deconditioned. Um, so now you have these people who have these cushiony shoes, they just get more and more and more cushiony, their feet get less and less and less um, able to, to support their weight, and then eventually we get put into an orthotic because an orthotic is going to support their, their, their feet even more. And then what you find is the people who have been wearing orthotics for a long time, they eventually, even the orthotic is not enough to support their foot. Now, if you actually take the time to look at your patients or your clients and get them to do or to try some of the um, more beginner exercises that I'm going to demonstrate, you'll realize that there's a significant amount of population that have absolutely no uh, ability to activate their intrinsic foot musculature, which is, which is obviously a huge problem. I also find it very funny that if someone comes to see a therapist or a practitioner for, let's say, uh, shoulder pain, you're going to treat them and then you're going to assign shoulder strengthening exercises. Same thing if they come in with a back pain, same thing if they come in with a knee pain. If someone comes in with a knee pain, you're going to give them knee exercises to make them stronger, more stable, etc. But for some strange reason, if someone comes in with plantar fasciitis, we're going to put them into an orthotic. And that's the same as saying we're going to put anybody that comes in for any joint problem into a brace. If you put people into a brace, you're, you're pretty much telling the nervous system that they no longer need to utilize their intrinsic musculature in order to support that joint. Um, and therein lies the problem. So I'm going to take you through a brief sequence. This is going to be expanded upon, of course, in functional range conditioning FRC seminars. Uh, but these are some of, the, uh, some of the things that you can start with your patients. One of the first exercises that I'll prescribe is actually the first thing I'll use in terms of... Um, assessing for intrinsic foot control. Uh, what I'm going to get the patient to do is I'm going to get him to plant the lateral four toes against the ground as hard as they can. So if you look at this foot here, we're planting the lateral four toes and then what we're going to do is we're going to get him to or her to slowly lift the great toe as high as they possibly can. Now, when we say as high as you possibly can, you want to extend as, as far as possible and what you're going to notice in people who can actually accomplish this is they're going to start to get cramping on the inside of their foot here as well as on the outside of their foot here and sometimes in their extensor groups. Now I always explain to patients that cramping is simply neurological confusion or it's the inability of the nervous system to really produce the movement that you're asking it to do. Um, so I'll really get them to fight through the cramping um, and, and just kind of tolerate it and they'll notice that the, pa the pain will go down. The next exercise we'll do is the exact opposite. I'll get the, per the person to simply flex the big toe into the ground as hard as possible, 
and then lift the lateral four. So we're going to flex the big toe, extend the lateral four. Once again, people are going to get cramping on that inner arch and they're going to start to get cramping on their extensor group, which is completely normal. In most cases, when you ask someone to do these, they'll kind of stare at their foot and the, you'll see flickers of contractions like that, but nothing will actually occur. And that's really not a, an uncommon uh, finding for, for most individuals um, who have no intrinsic foot strength. So how often will I prescribe this particular exercise? The answer is as many times as possible, holding for as long as you can. And I'll get them to do this both without a shoe as well as inside their shoe. So that would be the first exercise uh, that we would prescribe. Uh, if people can't do it at all, they'll notice that within a few weeks, hopefully, if they couldn't do it at all, they will get the ability to at least get the toe up a little bit. If they can't, you can get them to cheat a little bit by holding their toes down and then get them to extend, just to get the nervous system used to doing the motion. The next uh, motion that we're going to work on is, or the next um, movement that we're going to work on is the ability for the toes to adduct. Of course, adduction in the toes, meaning bringing the toes to the second digit, so closer to the midline. So what we're going to get the person to do is simply squeeze the toes together, not allowing any flexion to occur. You'll notice that when you tell people to squeeze their toes together, they'll start to flex. So we're going to get them to keep their toes perfectly straight and simply squeeze them together as I'm doing here. Now, most patients or most clients that you have will not be able to do that. So what you're going to do is using a pen, if you put a pen into or in between the two joints and then get them to squeeze, just the fact that the pen's there is going to give them enough afferent feedback so that their nervous system will actually know how to accomplish the task of adducting. Um, what you want to tell them to do is to try not to let the pen go in one direction or in the other uh, because if that's happening that means that they are uh, flexing the toes instead of pure adduction. So you want them to be able to hold it in between their toes and keep the pen relatively straight as they hold. So you're going to do it for those toes as well as for in between all of the other toes as well. So that's the, the movement of adduction. Once we've mastered the um, great toe extension, lateral four toe extension, and the adduction, what we're going to do next is work on abduction, which is actually considerably more difficult uh, and will take them a lot more time. So what we're going to do with the foot flat, we're going to get them to simply extend all of the toes, keeping the metatarsal heads down, and then from here, we're going to splay the small toe, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one, going towards the big. And we're going to get them to plant them one at a time on the ground. So raise up, keeping the heel on the ground, heel on the ground, metatarsals on the ground. Raise up, and then separate the toes, put the small toe down, the next digit, the next digit, and then the big toe. Extend up extend or expand, abduct, plant, 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 plant. The next one we're going to do is the often prescribed towel crunch. Uh, however, we're going to do it with a lot more um, levels of or progressing levels of difficulty. Um, what we're going to do, instead of just getting the people to crunch with their toes like this, we're going to make it a little bit more specific. We're going to start with getting them to crunch with their lateral four toes and then we're going to get them to pull it in with their big toe. So lateral four first and then big toe concentrating on actually tilting the foot as we're pulling. So getting a little bit of tilt medially or laterally as we're pulling. Once again, making the movement more dynamic. So from here, I'm going to draw in with my lateral four toes first. Great toe next. Lateral four. Great toe. Okay. In order to make this more difficult, we can start adding weight. For example, uh, it's a 20 pound kettlebell. Place the 20 pound kettlebell away from your foot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start to crunch with the big toe or the lateral four, straighten, crunch with the big toe. Crunch lateral four. Crunch, big toe. Now, this is obviously something that you're going to have to progress towards. If um, obviously 20 pounds is too much, you can just as easily use 
a smaller dumbbell or anything uh, that can provide you with a progressive resistance. Once we have some sufficient uh, baseline strength in the feet, then we can start challenging them in a more uh, dynamic uh, type fashion. This particular exercise will also help a lot with proprioception uh, of the intrinsic foot muscles as well as the uh, ankle mortis joint, all of the metatarsophalangeal joints, the interphalangeal joints, etc. So, first of all, we have to get people the ability to full squat. Um, if we can't full squat, as I've said before on the blog, as I talk about in my uh, seminars, that's something, that's a goal that almost every patient uh, should have or you should have with every patient. So we get our feet out at that nice 30 degrees, our knees are pointing out, and what we're going to do is once we get people comfortable in sitting in a squat, we're going to actually tell them to move themselves, not by leaning forward or leaning to the side, but by actually using their, their muscles. So for example, I'm going to instruct the person to use their anterior tibial muscles to pull them forward, and then to push to one side, come back, and transition to the other side. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the muscles of my feet as well as my lower limbs in order to do uh, circles around in the squat position. Switch and go the other way. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to increase the size of the circle um, every time you go around. It's something that we're going to be talking about once again in the FRC course, uh, but for now this is a, another good way to not only increase intrinsic foot strength and control, uh, but also to increase mobility in the um, ankle mortis joints. If you can't do that, of course, you can have the person standing um, either with their feet together or on one foot doing the exact same thing, trying to rotate around and use your intrinsic foot muscles to control the outer edges of the circle. As the person gets more advanced and we start to build more and more strength, this is where a lot of people um, tend to fall off in terms of, quote, rehabilitation versus performance. Um, just because the person has some intrinsic foot control, it doesn't mean they have enough intrinsic foot control to kind of progress them up that slope of performance. So when they have a good amount of intrinsic foot control, we can start some more advanced exercises. Uh, one that you can do is a simple calf raise, but instead of being halfway on the step, we're going to just use the toes. So we're going to balance off on the toes, not, not holding on to anything, and we're going to balance ourselves as we do calf raises off of the toes. Once that particular exercise uh, becomes easy, you can go with a single, uh, with the great toe. Once again, this is not something that you're going to do with every patient. It's going to be more for an advanced patient, but you can practice balancing on the big toe itself. The last one I'll go over is uh, an exercise which is commonly being prescribed now as if it's a new exercise, but in reality, um, we've been prescribing this for quite some time now, and that's the forward lean exercise. Now, usually the forward lean is done purely in an eccentric to isometric um, fashion. However, once again, you can progress this by either walking um, further away from the wall, as I'm going to demonstrate, as well as to start introducing some concentric contractions once you have enough strength in the intrinsic foot as well as the tibialis posterior, or sorry, the tricep surrey group in order to control this motion. So, from this position here, you're going to step away from the wall, and the idea here is to clamp the toes down by contracting in a flex position, and we're going to try to keep our knees straight and we're going to simply lean forward in a controlled fashion. Once we get to the wall, hopefully you haven't concussed yourself by hitting your head against the wall, then we're going to keep our body line straight again and work on pushing our way back. Slowly descend towards the wall, controlling the motion with the feet, and then pushing our way off. Okay, so that's it for, um, for this series of exercises. Is this an exhaustive um, collection of, of exercises that you can use for intrinsic foot strengthening? No, it's not. You can do quite a bit more, and we do go over quite a bit more in the uh, Functional Range Conditioning System, or FRC. Uh, but for now, it's a, it's a great way. I give you a great way to start. I give you some very good progressions. Um, these are the types of things that if you are interested in barefoot training, um, 
you probably need to do preemptively, especially if you're interested in barefoot running. These are the types of, of drills that you should probably get accustomed to before you go out and start um, putting that much load on the feet because, I mean, from all the benefit that barefoot running supposedly can, um, can, can give you, it can also be very detrimental and harmful if the body's not prepared for that.